Welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you how it's okay to get your own Wurlitzer 140A and how not to fuck it up. Like I did. I feel I should give you some quick backstory on why exactly I bought this and where I was coming from with buying it. So real quick, I did actually own a Fender Rhodes Stage 88 um, that I bought off a man in Gary, Indiana back in November, but I quickly realized that it is way too heavy for me and it didn't really fit the room, which was my parents' living room, and it looked like a casket. Uh, so when I found this on OfferUp, it looked a lot more pleasant to me. Um, personally, I don't use the, the upper registers much. I could use a little more bass, that'd be great. Um, but the size and it being 100 pounds less, coming in at about 100 pounds, um, it was, it was a good decision to, to downgrade. I moved the camera down a little bit. Hopefully that looks a little better. Um, but I really like this. One, because of the weight. Two, because of the size. And three, because of the action. The Rhodes action, to me, is really bad. And to most people, the Mark I action is not great. Um, you need, usually, a Vintage Vibe Miracle Mod kit, which allows the hammers to rise up a little more and make it sound or make it feel like you're not pressing down weights because it is really sluggish, really heavy, and honestly really tiring to play. Um, not only the action, but let me look at my list. Um, the top, you would think like, oh, you know, rows, blah, 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 I don't know. But if it's sitting in somewhere that's not a keyboard stack, there's no real way to put anything on a Mark One top. It's curved. It's plastic. It's also really hollow when you hit it. It's like, it's like, I don't know if it bends, but the 88 especially, definitely good. Um, it's not an easy thing to find things to put on top of. And this nice flat and semi-big surface is great. And it's also metal. Um, so if you spill something, it won't be too hard to clean it up. Um, but it's also metal. So that kind of sucks in terms of refinishing, but other than that, that's the last reason why I downgraded for my roads. I ended up selling it for thankfully a profit, um, but I did the Miracle Mod kit, I replaced the grommets, and it only cost me, I would say, no, I'd say 200, 200, 300, um, and I sold it to fund this. Quick backstory on this specific 140A itself. I found it on offer up for $2,400. I was able to talk them down to $1,000 just because it was all functioning, but three keys weren't working. Two keys, sorry. Um, and cosmetically, it was really rough. And it still is, as you can tell. Um, I was able to haul it out. They had no real history on it, just that it sat in a, in a closet. So it kind of sucked. But. Everything was intact, the legs, uh, the lid, which I won't show you because it's in my room, um, buried. And uh, there was just no, no music stand, which, eh, whatever. Now, like you, I was a little hesitant buying the 140A just because of all the articles I've seen online and how their amps were set up with the germanium and I didn't want to mess up any um, balancing or I don't know, resistor stuff, but thankfully the fine folk at Tropical Fish, I'll leave a link in the description, um, helped me out with how to recap all those, specifically the black ones to recap, which there's about 15, um, and that really helped me out a lot. I did use, um, I just bought the capacitors online, it cost me about $20 with shipping to get all the capacitors, like I said there was about 15, and it took only about... 30 minutes to an hour to get everything all freshened up in there and it sounded a lot better. Um, before it sounded a little muddy um, and really crackly, but now it sounds pretty good to me. Um, I've never played any other Wurlitzer, so I couldn't really tell you how it compares to like a 140B, um, but definitely do not let that stop you, but do let the read grommets stop you. 
because you've probably read, hopefully you've read, that the reed grommets need to be replaced and the screws due to a manufacturer issue. They tend to crack and will not um, hold pitch. And before I give you a tour of the cleaning, um, the reed grommets are replaceable and it is completely doable um, unless you mess it up like I did, so don't. But I will show you in a second once I go around and show you the stuff that I couldn't clean on this. So going around from the front, first we have our glue stain, or what I would assume to be the glue stain, um, since it didn't come up with the magic eraser and it's yellow and around the decal. Of course we have chipping. Remember the outside of this is wood, anything that's darker. And then the top tan portion is the metal lid, which is insulated. So going around uh, counterclockwise, I freshened up all the brass bolts, which kind of turned a little copper. Um, and any other metal hinges. These back speaker bolts um, can get loose. Mine were loose and they were rattling, which made the speaker rattle against the, the housing. Uh, make sure to tighten those. There's a nut on one side and the screw on the other. Really crank them down. Right here, uh, someone botched, well not botched because it works. Someone DIY'd this uh, power cable. It's just a two prong. He chopped off the the ground and cut off the sides since it's a little small of a slot. Um, the fuse is a one amp slow blow. Uh, mine, when I got it, had a piece of tin foil uh, dummied in there. So yeah, that'll show you in a little bit what uh what their inside looked like. There is a phono in, which I think is hilarious. Um, and there also is a option for a battery pack, though there are no photos online. And uh, yeah, I know it's like six lantern batteries, I don't know. Um, there also is a speaker out, which is pretty inferior to miking the actual speaker, um, to my knowledge. Here's our plate, the 140A, as you can see. Uh, they didn't care enough to actually make a separate plate. There is my serial number. And I did not redo the rubber coming around here. These are the cleaned up knobs. They clean up just fine. They're plastic. Uh, my light worked just fine. Same with my plug. Um, and then I did shine up the front little copings, but I did not do the back because this sits against a wall and it takes a lot of work and I'm lazy. Here's the front lock for the lid. And the lid, again, cleans up really nice um, since it's plastic, just like this lid. Um, and the nice bra or, uh, brass also shines up really nice. Though mine did not come with locks, you can get the spring locks at Vintage Vibe for about 20 bucks. Um, there's four of them on the lid, uh, which would be $80. I bought one um, and it works all right. Good thing I don't use the lid. Please do try to clean this though. Um, I only used Magic Eraser on the metal portions. I did not use it on the wood. It didn't work too well and it was a little too uh, soppy for me. I didn't want it to, to soak into the wood or the paint much, considering it was already chipping. But from there, let's go to the inside. First, I'm gonna talk about um, the keys. My keys in action, let me preface, um, I'm a piano technician. So I may be using some jargon that um, maybe you don't know. Sorry, that was so pretentious. Um, but I'll try to stop myself if I say something that's not common, but all the guides say the same thing. So you should be able to get your head around it when you're looking up a guide. With that being said, my keys in action, which is the actual thing that plays, um, was pretty all right in terms of regulation. None of my keys stuck except for like one um, and some uh, bushing easing, which is where you, you compress the felt on the inside of the key, which holds it in place next to a uh, metal pin. Um, if you just crush it down a little bit, um, it'll provide enough uh, space for the key to move down freely. I lubricated those with a 
Teflon? Yeah, liquid Teflon? No, it's the McLube something. Um, make sure not to use, they say use the Protex CLP, but that can get a little gunky if left on like friction areas, um, like metal for a long time. We're talking like five, ten years. Um, so I know, at least in my profession, we use the McLube. I think it's the MLP50, but I coated the, the, um, balance rail pins and the front rail pins with that. Made sure they were nice and shiny. I polished them up with just some, um, some metal polish. And uh, the dampers did need regulation. My dampers were not coming down all the way. There was just a screw on the top of the damper um, where you loosen. When you loosen it, it brings the back up more, which brings the front felt damper end down more onto the reed providing more pressure against it when it's moving. Um, and that fixed it just fine. But let off was fine, dip was fine. Dip is usually where you'll find problems, um, especially in roads and things like that. My key level was pretty fine. I just had to do a little adjustments. Um, but the actual feel of it was really smooth, really nice. Um, there was some jack issues when it comes to repeating back in the base end. Um, but just a little bit of the CLP for that, and it worked because I was a little too lazy to go out and repin it. Um, <clears throat> I would just say get yourself a bottle of CLP Protec CLP lubricant, that and the uh, hmm, the penetrant, which I will show you in a second. If you are going to take one thing from this video, take this portion. If you own a Wurlitzer 140A, you need to buy a penetrant oil. I bought the name brand Croil. This is about 20 bucks. If you don't have it, I don't really know why. Um, I'm glad I have it now. It's pretty much for any sort of stuck or seized screw. It penetrates the, the metal and gets in the grooves and hopefully loosens it up. You will need this when replacing your reed screws. You can get a kit at Tropical Fish or Vintage Vibe for about $60. Though Vintage Vibe, they doubled their reed screw price from a dollar a piece to I think 150, which brought my total from 60 to <clears throat> like 200. Or something maybe it was 250 um, but they sell them in individual screws unlike tropical fish which sell them as a kit for $60 so I would say go with tropical fish um, but $200 is a little too much for me um, what you will want to do is once you get these new screws in you will want to spray each of the reed screws with the penetrant oil for at least once a day for a few days let it really soak in there before you actually start extracting the screws. Because what will happen is if you're lucky like me, one of the heads, two of the heads, or three of the heads on mine are gonna snap off, leaving your thread in the uh, reed bar. <clears throat> and now I am too lazy to take off this top because there's like 20 screws. But the reed bar is the thing that holds your reeds. It's that metal bar um, and it's adjacent from the lighter colored uh, pickup. The pickup is the thing that's live when the um, player, when the keyboard is on. So you'll obviously want to do this when it's off um, and unplugged too. Just don't risk it because um, I've gotten close. But you want to unscrew the reed screws and most of the time the grommet washer, I might have been saying grommet, the washer will usually crumble Half of mine crumbled, um, that's fine. But the person before me who used the DIY fuse also tried to replace them for some reason and he broke two off himself. Luckily, I only broke one of mine, um, which was honestly the easiest one to get out, uh, funny enough. And um, his two were completely seized and I still don't have a working key. Um, but I did not use the penetrant oil. But I will tell you 
the $20 cost for the Penetrate Oil will save the two weeks of effort I have put into fixing this F-sharp. So please do it. You will use it outside of other things. So let's say you came to this video after you did that, after you bought a 140A, and after you broke a screw head. Congrats! Um, you have a few options. First, you could get a left-handed drill bit. This is the safest option. A left-handed drill bit or, uh, drills in in the counterclockwise um, rotation rather than clockwise which is basically a screw extractor. Um, but you wanna make sure it's a small drill bit. I think these screws are an eighth of an inch. And you wanna get right in the middle and hopefully with a little bit of pressure and lightly hitting it, um, the left-handed bit will lock on to the uh, broken head or broken screw and then slowly bring it out. It brought out the one that I broke, like butter. Um, so I don't know if the other two were seized for other reasons but it got out mine just fine. And hopefully it should get out yours, especially if you use the oil. Um, if that didn't work, some people will recommend putting a dollop of, um, what's that, that like cement, JB Weld? Uh, I would say no to that. I don't know how you're gonna hold a Allen wrench or some sort of bit on there for six hours for it to dry, um, but I thought it was a little too risky um, and I would end up JB welding that screw permanently into my reed bar if I did that. So the smart and uh, sophisticated option that I took to get my screw out was to drill a hole through it. Thanks, Dad. Because Dad thought, well, why don't we just drill right through it, you know? And then we could just kind of take it out and then use the threads. Well, we drilled through it, but we drilled through sideways. So then we tried drilling through straight. And we got through it, and obviously the, the threads were not there anymore. Um, but the, the bolt wasn't either. So, yeah, Dad took an L on that one, um, but usually he takes, takes W's most of the other times. So, mm. uh, but he came up with a great option of using a longer, skinnier bolt or drilling out the hole so there were no threads, making it a little larger, getting the same size bolt, get a nut on the other end with the locking uh, Teflon nut or whatever they call it, um, and just tightening the heck out of it, eliminating the thread portion. And it did work. It works pretty well. Um, you'll hear it, and I won't point it out to you, um, but I will be using it in our demonstrations um, you'll, it'll be a little rattly, not really rattly. Um, it won't sustain as well as the other ones, but compared to getting a whole new reed block or getting a machinist to do it, which none of the ones I talked to were down to, um, it's a pretty good solution for the dollar it cost to do it. Um, but this guy up here did not, did not get fixed. Uh, fortunately, I am not a pro piano player and go up here much. Maybe I just don't like the sound. I don't know. Um, but that that trick will only work down in the bass section, I think, maybe middle C and below, because when it gets that down, down there that far, um, the bottom of the reed bar is flat. Up here, it's um, on an angle, and you can't actually, there's not enough room to get the nut in there, unless you went really small. But um, that's really sketchy at that point. So there is still a um, thread in this hole. And uh, I don't know. I'll leave it for someone else. Unless you have been blessed by the whirly gods, your whirly will probably not come with a sustain pedal. Specifically a 140 sustain pedal, which is different from the 200 series sustain pedals due to the play in it. Um, I had to get mine from Vintage Vibe for about $215. It's probably the most expensive thing you're going to buy, um, but I do think it's worth it. It doesn't feel too great. It's a little squeaky, um, but I do believe that is my portion up here, not the actual pedal. The pedal design and um, make is pretty much the exact same as the Wurlitzer original, though the platypus bill 
is a little ugly, but mm, you know, it's original. Well originally designed. Um, so I just left a comment telling them to uh, format it for the 140 series so there's a little more play because if you get a 200 I believe it's either they dampen right away or they don't dampen until it's all the way pressed down or lift up you know what I mean so the pedal from there um, I would not recommend going on eBay there are listings that say 140 pedal uh, redid or whatever um, with the finish which look really nice and they're also like $30 cheaper or 50 um, but they are in fact 200 uh, model specified but with the paint job for a 200 or the teacher version um, so I almost lucked out <clears throat> thankfully Steve uh, saved me with that also check out the Wurlitzer the Wurlitzer Facebook page or group uh, Wurlitzer Electric Piano Facebook group. Um, they have so many knowledgeable people there to tell you when you're fucking up um, and how not to. Pro tip, you can shine the brass a little bit better by coating it in acetone first. Um, I'm not sure if they have a protective layer over the brass um, little couplings, but when I did it, it made it a lot easier to shine compared to without that, since you're rubbing through that whole layer first. So now I'm gonna do two songs featuring the Wurlitzer. One of them was originally recorded on acoustic piano, and the other one um, was actually in the recording made on a Wurlitzer. Um, please enjoy. I will be miking it with a Sennheiser E906 dynamic microphone using an angled uh, mount on the speaker. There is a headphone jack and a uh, speaker out, but from what I have learned and what I have heard, the speaker is the best option for getting a good sound out of a Wurlitzer mine slash 200 version. For the first one, or for one of the songs, I'll be using a tremolo on it, um, or the vibrato, sorry, um, which works quite well, and even though it makes a little pop, pop, pop sound, which is just the... Uh, the thingy inside I don't know um, and my volume will be at the lowest it can while still picking up on the microphone because there is a little bit of a hum uh, hopefully none of the uh, pedal noises get in there but what can you do so if you enjoyed I do a lot of videos like this keyboards other instruments I currently have a Vox Jaguar uh, the continental little cousin in my garage which I'm trying to not look like shit um, but it's kind of going all right. So hopefully you'll see a video on that. And if you enjoyed this, uh, feel free to stick along for some more.